Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we give the honor and the glory to our loving Lord for granting us another opportunity to share this glorious gospel. Well, this is Mazima Kenneth. Together, with my sister Mary. Now, today we are doing part two of Acts. Remember, we started on this Bible exposition that basically covers uh, the book of Acts. We are looking at chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and allowing the word of the Lord to set the agenda. This is the biblical way uh, that would actually grow the church, where we are able to expose ourselves to the full context of what is being discussed, other than picking and choosing which is also very common today because some people tend not to devote themselves so much in wanting to know the context of something. So we also said when starting on to this book that one of the outstanding benefits are us knowing how the early church started, what are the prescriptions, and uh, what are those descriptive things for us not to continue. And to know things that the apostles emphasized and those that they never emphasized. When you understand the practice in the book of Acts, it will in one or the other enable you not to go into the modern day mixing up of the entire Bible. Those are very important things. Avoiding the issue of mixing up the Bible. And the practices in the book of Acts today, they have been taken out of their right Full context. However, if we want to be sound believers and sound churches, we need always to understand things in their rightful context. That will enable us to know what is to be continued and what is to be discontinued but not just taking the fisherman together with his boots. So it starts by saying in chapter 2 verses 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come this now goes back to one thing that is very important. The Lord had promised in Acts 1 that when the Spirit cometh, the apostles would be his witnesses. So the promise that was made in Acts 1 in chapter 2 it is being fulfilled. In chapter 1 the apostles were equipped. In chapter 2 the apostles begin on the serious work. So in chapter 1 the apostles were withheld but in chapter 2 they were commissioned. So in chapter 2 still we see the birth of the church. And what is very important there are a number of seven feasts of the nation of Israel. 
There is what we call the feast of the Passover. Which Jesus fulfilled when he became our Passover lamb. According to 1 Corinthians 15:7. There is also what we call the feast of the unleavened bread. Which also Jesus fulfilled as he was the Lamb of God without any sin. The third one is known as the feast of the first fruits, which also Jesus fulfilled when he was the first person to be raised from the dead. That has been fulfilled. There is also what we call the feast of Pentecost. Now that one was also fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. So Pentecost followed Passover. So it was celebrated 50 days after the celebration of the Passover. And then there are other feasts. Like the one we are looking forward to. The feast of uh, the trumpets. And that is one thing that the church is looking up to. That is to do with the rapturing of the church. And then there are other two feasts. That are also left there. And they are also going to be fulfilled. The feast Feast of Atonement and the Feast of the Tabernacles. So, there are those three that we are looking forward to. And the immediate one being the Feast of of the trumpets. Waiting for the second coming of Christ to come for his church. So out of the seven feasts, there are only four that have now been fulfilled. So now here looking at chapter 2, we are now seeing after people had celebrated the Passover feast. Where most of the Jews would come back to Israel to celebrate it. One thing that is very outstanding is that that was basically the day actually when the Pentecost also appeared. So since it happened every after 50 days after the Passover and several people would actually come from all corners of the world to celebrate it in Israel. The Bible, the Bible now says now when Pentecost when the day of Pentecost was fully calm that is to mean after the 50 days they were all in one accord. Now there's a teaching that uh, that is very important for us to know about. And that is the teaching that is to do with the enemies of unity which actually we also do in this particular line and I would suggest that if one wants to understand the meaning of the one accordance that is a very good teaching but this is very important also to understand that chapter 1 shows how the apostles were in one accord and chapter 2 also makes an emphasis how they were in one accord now they were in one accord and that is basically to mean they were one in mind they were one in, in purpose and were one in passion so this does not mean 
that all of them didn't have different opinions but as far as we are concerned there was a common good of them being together not actually one seeking his own so the accordance here is so important for us as believers we are to be united for the common good and us witnessing for Christ and being a blessing to the body of Christ and when the Holy Spirit was poured he never found them divided we have made it very clear in other teachings that one thing that defines the modern day church today is the issue that is to do with divisions. The enemies of unity have are so very much common in the church today. Because everyone is seeking to promote his name and the name of his ministry. That is why there are so many aberrant teachings, I mean different teachings that are not in agreement with the rest of the scriptures. But he never came unto a divided group of individuals. When you hear people praying for revival today with the knowledge of the scriptures you just shake off your head and say I don't know what actually is happening. Because with this sort of division we are seeing today we cannot begin to hope for something of that sort. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. But look at the people in the church how we are so very much divided. What revival are we seeking for? Because what we are instructed to do, we do not adhere to it. The Lord prayed for us to be one as He and His Father are one. But the issue of actually one seeking His own it's one thing that is bringing in a lot of this and people being not satisfied with what is already given in the scriptures but I would tell you one simple thing God delights in people who are one it's one thing that brings praise unto him his name. When we are united for a common goal and keeping that which has been given already in the scriptures. So, but in verses 2 it says and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Now this is very important for us to understand. They didn't know at what particular minute or second the Holy Spirit would actually come the statement here in chapter 2 disconstructs the common nonsense today or people saying that they are able to see the Holy Spirit coming. That I'm seeing him is going to touch some of you here. And some people saying that they are able to push him to, to, to the other direction. Others say that uh, they, they, they can actually transfer the anointing. Our dear ones listening. Those are false things. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. 
Twin Maleng Obero Lobat, me a dek. He is not under the control of any man. But in Kari Mama Dak Romo Dorone. We are not the ones who tell him where to go and where not to go. Wana pe wa wati kamu cheri ye, ki kwe ma pao cheri ye. And our Lord Jesus made it very clear. Dak wrote wa yesu wa jomaleng. When he said. Ma wachi. That the spirit no one knows where he comes from and where he is going. Ni Twin Maleng, ngandi mo pingeo kamu aki ye, ki kwe ma dore ye. When he was speaking to Nicodemus. Kamu beroka loki Nicodemus. So that's a very important thing thing to actually learn. There is no any person that can transfer the anointing of the Holy Spirit other than Christ alone. We are not that smart. That is our God. So we should put away all the jokes. So the Bible says that and suddenly there came a sound. Now the way he came in was a way of actually having their attention. This was one thing that would streamline their attention to what was happening. So as we are looking at the significance of Pentecost, this is what makes Pentecost to be very significant. How the Spirit came in in a sudden manner. There were no actually pre prepared way of actually receiving Him. And uh, this is one thing the Bible says. He came. So today now Pentecost has been made to be very common. And people saying that the same thing that happened on Pentecost they are supposed to be continuous. Now there has to be always a sudden coming of the Holy Spirit and all of that. And whatever happened on that day should always be like that. So but but you should fear for yourself when Pentecost becomes very common. That could be another spirit. Say so that suddenly there came a sound from heaven. So it's very important for us to understand much as there are many spirits but there are two main spirits. The spirit of God and the spirit of the world. The spirit of God the Bible shows us he came from heaven. This wasn't the spirit of the world but this was the spirit of God. The direction is being shown unto us in the scripture. A sound from heaven. That is to mean that what Jesus had actually earlier on said to his disciples was now being fulfilled. Remember he had told them earlier in John chapter 7 and the verse is 37 to 39 that when he is glorified the promise of the Father would come. Now the coming of the Holy Spirit alone shows us that Jesus was now already glorified. Therefore the promise would be fulfilled. So he came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. The Bible shows us that his coming was in the very character of the rushing mighty wind. And no one knows the direction of it all. But the Bible makes it clear for us that his coming was in the very character of the mighty rushing wind. And the Bible says and it 
filled the house. So one thing the Bible makes so very much clear here that we do not have to go wrong about is that the sound of the mighty rushing wind filled the house. Very, very important. Where they were sitting. So it wasn't anywhere outside the upper room where the, the disciples were with other people. So it's basically those individuals that witnessed and experienced the sound from heaven that was in the character of the rushing mighty wind. So the Bible says and that's one thing that we also need to understand that in, uh, in the Bible the, the Holy Spirit is actually known to, to be in one or the other uh, shadowed in that form. The, the wind the dove and many others. So, but the Bible shows us since it was the first time in the history of actually all of those that say that they are believers. This outpouring that would be actually upon all of those that believe had to be in such a remarkable way to indicate that this was a special moment. So every person that is now born again today they are born of the spirit but it does not come the way it came here this was actually an outstanding moment this had to remain in the records that the coming of the Holy Spirit when the church was born was actually in a unique manner it was in a special manner that is very very important we all know so very much well other celebrations even if people are married the first day they are married it is so very special the first day that kid goes to the school it's so special that kid is life the first day the person begins to work it's so special special in their lives. Even if it was your first house, whether it was a grass house and it was yours, it can also be special to you. Saying, man, I have grown. I have also built myself a house. And the first time you buy yourself something when you've been all, all along living in your father's house, that shirt or dress is always special. You keep it somewhere. And someone says, what is so special about it. There are people say that it reminds me of something. So this was the special way how the spirit came in. In verse 3 the Bible says and there appeared unto them. Now mark that one very much well. To the people that were in the upper room the Bible says there appeared unto them. Now the them are which are which individuals? The them are those that were inside the upper room. Remember we said that that upper room was a special room in the house for, for prayers and for, the, for religious meeting. 
says that they appeared they are manifested unto them cloven now cloven is a same word that means divided tongues meaning that there were very many tongues that appeared cloven tongues now the tongues here it can mean actually like two things a tongue can mean the member of our body just like the tongue I'm using to, to, to communicate and the second meaning it basically points to languages but in the context of what we are discussing here these were different languages that were to sit and to remain unto the apostles until the church was properly founded because the Greek word here that is known as glossa is not different anywhere the word language is mentioned in the Bible so now here is where it is very important where are many people today like even some of us in the past and how we were actually not looking at uh, something very clear people would read into the scriptures other than reading out the sound way of teaching is what we call inductive study but what we call a deductive you place your mind into the scripture where you want to actually inform the scripture other than the scriptures informing you so many people have dealt with Acts chapter 2 in a deductive manner informing the Bible other than them allowing the Bible to inform them the Bible speaks of languages these were not incoherent bubbles they were not some sort of uh, voicings that were not having any meaning to them. But they were coherent tongues. Intelligible tongues that a person could understand. And where we would actually many go wrong is begin to go into these incoherent, the gibberish ones, the ecstatic tongues and say that I don't understand but I speak. God overlooks now the days of ignorance. We should allow the Bible to teach us. So the word here that is known as tongues which is also known as glossa in Greek it is the same word that appears in the rest of the New Testament indicating languages human languages authentic languages not these modern artificial tongues all of those so now here it says that there appeared unto them divided tongues that is to mean that unto these individuals everyone was given a tongue 
because they were divided tongues. The Bible says, like as of fire. Now, the fire indicates what we call the presence of God. This indicates that this was the Lord is doing. The first time the Lord appeared to Moses, he appeared in a burning bush, yet it wasn't burning. So the fire here in the context can refer to what we call the presence of the Lord in it. This was a supernatural thing that was happening. It didn't happen at their own will. In the sense that they began to talk as they wanted. Today we see the tongues that the people talk about in church. They are so artificial. They are not real. They are cosmetic tongues with layers of deception in it. And it sat upon each of them. Now these tongues were to remain on them. Like I've already made an emphasis too. But until the church would be actually well founded with Within those those years. Now remember earlier on the Lord had made another thing that is very important. That is to do with Mark 16. He spoke about how his disciples would be able to speak in unknown tongues. Now the fulfillment of that would only be a possibility but after the outcome pouring of the Holy Spirit. So what was basically happening here? These were not actually tongues that the apostles had learned formally. This was indeed a supernatural experience that they that had no ability they that were unlearned in these languages that, that they spoke they were aided and enabled to speak languages they never spoke before that is what makes it to be a supernatural sign gift and the tongues were a part of the apostolic sign gifts Re in other teachings we, we have also made it very clear that what we understand by the apostolic sign gifts these are gifts that would give validity to the ministry of the apostles so, so they had to be having particular things that would designate them or separate them from others. And since it was the first time for the gospel now to be shared out in the rest of the world, their preaching had to be accompanied with outstanding signs for it to gain root for it to gain ground in all the regions of the Romans and the Greeks so God actually accompanied and he watered and supported everything they taught with actually signs and wonders the typical one is that even a plant that you've just planted. There is a lot of actual care that is being given to that thing that you've just planted with watering, with a lot of caring and all of that until it gains ground. So it was of necessity for the founding of the church to be accompanied with, with these outstanding saints and wonders. 
chaque paka ni chenye umiro work a chiki town kila nyot makire pat egini because earlier on pian chon as far as this term is concerned makwa kire makare ni the whole canon of the scripture was not yet written vuk me bible no fet pe ya kicho yotum so some of these outstanding and supernatural actions would point people to god si la kore nyot e ni kitam kila nyot egini no nyuru dan telu dan bonduba through the preaching of the apostles ni work e kwena te to kwena palo kwena ni but now that we have a complete canon there is no much need for many of these because what is very outstanding is that faith does not come by sense and wonders but it comes through hearing and hearing of the word of God but Christians who do not see the relevance of the scriptures they front the signs before the teaching of the word my dear ones we should trust that god knew what he was doing and as far as the starting of the church is why these things happened but i want us actually to 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 continue further first of all they rested on each of them so this was actually a normative for the apostles however today we may not see the same thing because the entire teaching of the scripture shows us that the tongues were a sign to the unbelieving Jews tongues are a sign to those that that are unbelievers they, are, they were not used in the church but outside the church and during the early church if they happen to appear in the church that would have met a special revelation that the lord had wanted to communicate to the congregation however it would not be again welcomed without the interpretation so as we are talking right now these tongues fulfilled their purpose that is why tongues and the interpretation of tongues with time they began to fade away because the purpose had already been fulfilled because those that needed that sign the sign was seen of them and now what we do have is everyone has to believe the written word of God so so what we hear today it's not what is being described in the scriptures what we have in the scriptures does not agree with what we see today it's not a sign to any person it is incoherent everyone is saying whatever he feels to say there is no purpose to it and all of that simply because men of what we have today they are demonic and psychological in nature and, and many others are actually a land behavior that is why you see people today who say that they speak in tongues which are not even tongues they say I can speak any time I want I, I can even help you to start my dear ones who are listening no one trained these guys no one told them repeat after me ma 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 ba 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 no one taught them that but today what people are calling tongues they even teach others how to speak that alone shows that it is not of the Holy Spirit it is not supernatural someone is able to teach you that and much as we are displaying this truth 
are those who are strong willed and they say that uh, for me even if you talk about it that is one thing that takes me in the spirit but to be actually polite to you you are talking of a different spirit it's not the spirit of God the Holy Spirit does not contradict scriptures for scriptures were inspired by the Holy Spirit so anything causing a division and you call it actually the Holy Spirit please don't call it the Holy Spirit give it another name it says that in verses 4 and they were all filled they were all filled with the Holy Spirit now something that is very important here the word for filling here is the same word it is the same thing that is to do with, uh, with the empowerment so it appears in a number of different places in the scripture it also appears in Ephesians chapter chapter 5 verses 17 and 18 where the Bible says that be filled with the Holy Spirit and do not be drunk with wine it also appears in Acts chapter 4 verses 8 it also appears in Acts chapter 4 verses 30 to 31 in chapter 5 it also appears in chapter 13 it also appears so this is one thing we can say we have one baptism in the Holy Spirit but with many feelings now look at this one very carefully all believers have the indwelling Holy Spirit but he can come on us for the benefit of others that is the same thing you are seeing here that this sign was not to the, the one speaking it was a sign to those that they were reaching out to so one baptism but with many feelings the Lord can empower any of us at any time to speak boldly his words in a special way so now when you find it somewhere else again do not say how many times were they actually baptized now that is why sometimes now there is another lie about it there are people that have again gone into the reading into the scripture and they say to to the sincere believers if you say that you're born again why is it that you don't speak in tongues what is the sign of the tongues so now this is the thing we talked about that is to do with the, the prescription the, the, the descriptive verses that what we do have here it is not a prescription it's not a continuous thing it is descriptive they are showing us what happened they are not saying that copy the same thing in the that is not what the bible says then you hear people beginning to question their salvation but am I born again there are several others that wrote that have written to me in my teaching years that why am I not able to speak in tongues so and so helped me I never I also went to the other conference they say that man is well uh, much used of the, but I never but the, but the ones who are with that idea that why are you not speaking in tongues they themselves they don't have the tongues they have the artificial ones but they are based on their friends as if for them now they are super dupers so 
my dear ones, listen. This was not a prescriptive verse. Doctor Luke is only showing us what happened on Pentecost. The outstanding man of the Holy Spirit. And now that first church actually started in that outstanding way. So the Bible says and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now the Bible says and began to speak without the Holy Spirit empowering. There is no way of speaking. It is him who empowered them. It is him who aided that hands. It is him who gave the quickening the assistance the guidance follow through it says they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began and is a conjunction it connects what we are seeing with what has been said earlier simply put that the speaking follows after the enablement of the Holy Spirit that is why 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and the verse is 11. It says that for who knows the person's thoughts other than the spirit of the Lord. Now more to that in 1 Corinthians 12 and the verse still is 11. This is what it says. After talking about a number of different gifts it says all of these I empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. So now if you speak at any time you want who empowers that? Who apportions that? Is it the will of the Lord or your own will? That is why we are saying that what we have today it is artificial it does not agree with that that we have in the spirit I mean in the scriptures remember one thing my dear ones the day you were born again your gifts were given to you the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ the same way naturally people are born with natural talents running uh, actually football and all of those so the way we are born naturally we are born with a natural talents and when we are born against us we are born of the spirit the Holy Spirit has apportions to all of us particular giftings what is only left is for you to identify what is your gift so that is very important the day you were put into the body your gift was apportioned to you however when you are to be used in an outstanding manner still it is the Holy Spirit who knows how to use that then you, 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 are, of, you are actually of an outstanding service to the body these are important things and they will help us not to mix up the entire Bible we just need to understand the verse we don't need to rush the verse fully understand the verse because there is no any verse that can deny its context the Bible makes it very clear and the they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other 
tongues. So the one enabling them is none other than the Holy Spirit. Peter and the rest of the people they could not. They could not. This had to be the Holy Spirit. And that is what makes it a miraculous sign gift. Now come to think of this. What is the meaning of the word sign? The sign is of the purpose of pointing to something. So now, if we say that this was an apostolic sign gift, the sign was fulfilled. When you go to like, you go into a place and you see the signpost. And then for you the moment you reach the signpost, you say, I'm not leaving here. They say, what are you doing there? This is the place. The thing is only pointing to something. They say, please, you leave this place alone. I am not going anywhere, I've reached. Then something is not right with you. Signs are arrows. They are pointers. They direct you something. So now this is where we say this was an apostolic sign gift. That even in those who could say that this is not God, seeing this guy speaking in a language they knew not about, but speaking perfectly, fluently, without any sort of stammering. This was enough to those that needed to see this sign. And so the Bible says, they all began to speak with other tongues. Now listen, listen, listen. As the Spirit gave them utterance, there is nothing to do with you can speak anytime you want. If you say that you can speak Speak anytime you want. Who is in charge? It is not the Holy Spirit. It is you. Because we, we, you, you can use him anytime he wants. You want. Now the person who knows the scriptures will say, Where is the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit? If you are the one who directs him. So are you seeing how we have made an insult towards the spirit of the Lord and the word of God? And right now as we are doing this teaching. There are people who are speaking right now in tongues somewhere. They are in their circle. They are in their robot. They are in a robot And a lot of those things. Right now as we are doing this teaching. And for them they know they have reached. Hey, religion was killing us. We have reached. Hey, hey, this is very nice. How you are able to be used by the Lord. My dear ones. Whatever it is, don't call it the Holy Spirit gift. The Bible says that they began to speak as he gave them the address. Verses 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Remember this was in the middle of, of the city. Remember these past, they were celebrating the feast of the Passover. You know like you choose to go somewhere. The celebration. Homecoming. And maybe visiting your family. All of you from town and you go to a watch. Some might just reach there. And celebrate with others. And on that very day they disappear. But there are those who linger around. More than a week. And they say this is home. I'll go back home. So now, after they had celebrated actually Passover, many still 
Futo jamu kwenye. Passover caught them there. Ni yano mepenta kuto ngorogi kwa. And there were very many. Tino giduong. That is why the Bible says. Eno mi Bible wati. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Tino guti e Jerusalem. Jews devout men. Lo Judea magumi ne bado ba. When it speaketh of devout men. Kwa wa lo Judea magumi ne. It basically means. Tello kini. A group of men. Duldano, that was so devoted to the things that they never wanted to offend God by not keeping his word. People that are known not to miss in action. That others can miss but you'll hear people say ah, that one cannot miss. So there were people that were loyal. People that never wanted to offend God. So they would always come back to celebrate Passover. The Bible now says for this time around it was unique. And out of every nation under heaven. So these were actually Jews. The Bible says dwelling at Jerusalem. Then it says Jews devote men. Are you seeing that this was a sign gift? To Jews, devout men. Actually, to concretize this one in a, in a very good way. I want to substantiate this using also 1 Corinthians 1. The Bible is so very much clear. It says in 1 Corinthians 1.22 that Jews demand signs. And the Greeks seek wisdom. So this was a prophecy. Given long time ago from the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5. Isaiah 28. And God was saying something. But to those that the sign was too. They knew what it meant. They would know that these things they were said earlier on. And because of their unbelief, God had actually said to them that He would speak to them in a tongue that they knew not. During the time of Jeremiah, where I allowed them to be taken in Babylon. However, we see one thing that on the day of Pentecost, this tongue again came as a sign of actually as a it not only the, the, the birth of the church, but it was also a, actually a sign of God's judgment upon those that were not believing. Paul himself makes it very clear. In 1 Corinthians 14, 22, he says thus, tongues are, are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. He makes it very clear. So now, when I say that this was fulfilled because these immediate individuals were Jews that were looking for the sign. And I hear what is gibberish. And I hear what is incoherent. People calling it the Holy Spirit gift. That is indeed an assault against God's word and the Spirit of the Lord. So church need, the church needs to learn these things. It's not that uh, if you don't, you don't do these things, you have less of the Holy Spirit. And those who go for, and those who go for the artificial, they have more of the Holy Spirit. You and they that are doing the artificial, if it is actually serving Ledo, God is the same serving Ledo for each and every one of us. There is no one to say, 
that from the fullness of Christ we have received so from Christ's fullness we have all received no one has more and other ones, others have less okay what we have established here in verses 5 is first of all the thing was happening in Jerusalem it was not happening anywhere else in Jerusalem Jerusalem. A church was born there because the gospel had to start there. And we have known that many as these people were, there were Jews who were devout men out of every nation under heaven. People continue to miss this on a daily basis. The word Jews, the people miss it. And where Jews are, people put in other things. I think was basically the way it happened to particular individuals because they look for that particular sign. And again the tongue bit about it was also pointing to, to the extensiveness of the message. The fact that they call it tongues, languages this message was not only to stop in Jerusalem it would reach all tongues on the face of the earth no wonder the devout men they all came out from every nation under the heaven. This is how far the gospel message would go. To all nations under heaven. And when we are approaching men of the glorious times, Revelation 5 9 says, The saints in heaven sang a new song. And they said, Worthy are you, Lord. In fact, beginning it with verses, uh, verses 8, it says, Revelation 5 8. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down, each holding a hump and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints now look at it, this one here the four living creatures and the 24 elders they sang a new song saying worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and by your blood you ransomed the people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation the same word here for language is the same in Acts chapter 2 for glossa meaning authentic language that was spoken by people so why the gift of tongues was actually the first one to appear it also points to how far the message would reach these were not tongues of angels like we have had today these were real languages 
Venu lemma down lor ke kila ware. But now we have already seen. Eh no one nay no gira. That the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders. Nigina kera and wen kilu dire piari wangwen. They actually praise the Lord. Gen go paroluba. Showing that his sacrifice. Kongignuru ni giti ene. Reached to actually the individuals that are so very much distanced from Jerusalem. And I'm telling you that the message of our Lord Jesus Christ that the Jews need to believe on is the same message that the Gentiles believe on. We have one Lord, one gospel. So that is why Paul said that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto many salvation. To the Jews first and also to the, to the Greeks. Look at that. So now, we want now to take it further. Bible says in verse 6, And when this was noised abroad, meaning that it went past the room and the multitude came together they are attracted the Bible says they were confounded they were confused because why were they confused the confusion is not the speaking the confusion is every one of them hearing people in their own tongue. This is miraculous. I mean, when did they start to learn this? It's not that the tongues were confusing. And people now use this who do not read in the context that the same way people in the context at Pentecost were confused. You don't understand my tongue. I wish you understand. Man, taboseke. And all of that. <laughs> but one thing that is very important the people themselves that were confused they were confused in knowing the inability of these guys but also being able to speak I mean what is this because that every man had them speak in his own language that is where the confusion came from this one is able to speak this one is able to speak the other one is able to speak where did you learn this thing from where is this ability coming from and perfectly that was one thing that, very, that was very outstanding now I hope you are very clear the word that we have seen in verses 4 as tongues is the same word that we have in chapter in, in chapter 2 verse 6 for language. So now here is one other thing that I want us also to understand. Is that these were authentic languages. What they spoke was tested their auditors were the ones that had it and they said they had them in their languages so I know there are some things that are very hard to stop after you are so very much fiery about them but for the sake of the gospel stick to the bible to the writings of the scripture you wouldn't want to be a part of those that confused the gospel of Christ because <laughs> someday you have to stand before him. So never should it be 
that you are among those that brought in a lot of confusion with the gospel remain simple but systematic you, you don't go above that which is written so in verses 7 it says that they were all amazed the confusion has gone the guys are now amazed no wonder these, these are some of the things as to why when we go to chapter 8 Peter and John they lay hands on the believers and they receive the Holy Spirit I mean same on the sorcerer I was amazed how, do, how are you able to do this how much should I pay you guys so that I can also get that these ones they never actually pulled out money but they were very amazed and marveled saying one to another man no wonder look at this one here they said this one to another behold are not all of these which speak Galileans the Bible is very clear from the book of 1 Corinthians how clear is the scriptures God always wants to, to assume the strong God always wants to, to, to assume the wise of this world that is why the scripture is very clear when it speaketh to you and I. It says in 1 Corinthians 126. For consider your calling. Brothers. Not men of you are wise according to the worldly standards. This one speaks also of the apostles themselves. These were fishermen. They were not professors in, in Jerusalem. They were not linguistics and not many of you are powerful not many were of noble birth that is to mean that some of us even our background if we begin to share we are born you were born in actually in some banana plantation they could not reach the hospital <laughs> but the Lord uses you anyhow <laughs> this is what he says <laughs> but God chose what is foolish in the world <laughs> to shame the wise God chose what is weak <laughs> in the world <laughs> to shame the strong like, this is the same thing here that is happening because now they have enough evidence and to these Galileans these were unlearned guys they were contented with their language what was the need for learning another the Bible says they were amazed because are, there is that caliber of people who say what I know is what I know if I don't actually it's okay with me so do not begin to squeeze me that why I'm not learning <laughs> but if God does a miracle and I speak just know that that is the Lord it is not me Verses 8. Bible adds in to say. How we hear we every man in our own tongue. Are you noticing something? There is actually an interchanging of language and tongue. Don't be confused. Those of you who, are, who, who stick so much to the tongue, tongue, tongue. It is being interchanged in different areas. Yeah, th we have to explain it all so that if you, you choose to be lost, you be lost on your own. But we shall make it clear by the Spirit of the Lord. 
says how we hear every man in our own tongue. But remember earlier, there were the very people who said in verse 6 that they were confused because that every man had to then speak in his own language. Now here it is being interchanged for tongue. That's the thing we are talking about. They were authentic tongues. Okay, now, when we consider uh, verses uh, 8 again, it says, and uh, how we will hear every man in our own tongue. Where we were born. Now look at that. What they could not imagine is what these guys were doing. They were speaking it exactly. And the Bible is very clear. This basically shows you how many Jews had been scattered in several places. The Bible talks about the Parthenians. Verse 9. It talks about the Panthenians. It talks about the maids. It talks about the Elamites. It talks about the dwellers in Mesopotamia. It talks about those in Judea. Those in Cappadocia. Those in Pontus. Pontus. And, and those in Asia. Those in Fiji. Those in Pamphylia. Pamphylia. And those in Egypt. Egypt. And in parts of Libya. Libya. About Serene. Dark it uh, and strangers of Rome and the Jews and proselytes. Cretes, Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of God. My dear ones, they were not just in Sakuraba. They were not just in Bobo 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 Bobo. They actually gave praise to God in a language that people knew. Because there is no any gift that is given for your benefit. Benefit. To witness for Christ. To edify the body of Christ. And the Bible says. They themselves accepted. Today. We have challenges. People want to force us to believe what is artificial, what is what is not real. It's the spirit tongue. But when the spirit inspired these guys, they spoke things which people could understand. <laughs> My dear ones, it is very clear that people want to fall in love with things they do they have no clue about. Yes, I know he's an Indian. I don't know what they believe, but I love him. Do you know what they worship? No, I don't care. They are beautiful. So don't think they of surface value. It's one thing that is very common. But we need to get into the rightful context of things. You see, one of the things that shows that a person reveres and reveres God or honors God it is seen in how one handles God's word a person who honors God will be careful on how he handles God's word and how you handle the word of God shows us how you honor the Lord because if you begin to trust God's words to make them say what they don't say. There is a question mark about your, your, your reverence of God. Who are you not to fear to begin to change what God has said? There is no guilt unto anyone who has been just deceived but is willing to learn. 
Yeah, go making all living and more matier king mire me for you. But many young gimme. But you one who is able to understand and you insist. Etong and more madora one young. There's a problem with that. Peroti Kenyo. Verses to a love. Tia pario. And they were all amazed. Tigin do to go oro. And were and were in doubt. Ma pegi to ernia. Saying one to another. Magi wadi bolo wad. What meaneth this? Mante lokeningo. Verses to a verses thirteen. Tia para there. Others mocking said. Jomukene gunyer kun. These men are full of new wine. Jo magi gume kicha kicha kudi kuchane. Now some people have had misusing again this statement. Ati nem jo magi ne gitiu marad kiting in. Ibo say. Dangi wachi. If you want to speak English. Kamia loko lemo no. Much as you've never gone to any school. Karibu tu pete ergan kwan mo. You drink alcohol. Mami do mi kwa. You'll begin. Icha icha. To say what's up. Icha icha. You mean what's up? And a lot of those things. Ikuegi mo ikea. My dear ones. Those are not true things. Even those ones you see drunk and speak in some English, they knew something. Do not intoxicate yourself. Saying that it is your secret of learning. You pay school fees and learn. So now here is one thing. What they are saying, what means this? Is one thing that Peter will make clear in the rest of the other verses. Others mocking, saying they are full of wine, as if it is the wine that would enable them to speak in different languages. It shows how unbelievers they were. It shows how how importantly this sign was needed. Because it is from this very congregation that Peter preached to and the rest of the apostles. And, and the three thousand people came into the kingdom. So now in verses fourteen, in Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice. Said to them, you men of Judea, and all of you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. So here is where we shall pick up from with actually the other part. We hope that this teaching in one or the other will bring clarity to many that have been having some confusions in this particular line. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Shalom.